mm-hmm. about the global opportunity set and, and, and really outside of the US and maybe the developed markets in, in, in the UK and Europe, opportunities, vulnerabilities, what are you and the team seeing there? So China has been one of the biggest surprises, I think, over uh, since our last cyclical forum in March. Uh, growth has obviously surprised to the downside as a result of their zero COVID policies, as a result of their kind of stop start uh, 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 you know, uh, strategy for uh, stimulus, and then obviously their their housing market, um, you know, which has also been um, somewhat of a, a policy uh, choice to to engineer, uh, you know, uh, some some deceleration there. You know, so overall, we think that there could be some more uh, willingness from Chinese policymakers to de- you know to tolerate some lower growth outcomes. But ultimately, we aren't expecting a recession in China. But nevertheless, we do expect there to be downside risks there. You know, in that. Pl- Plus, uh, higher policy rates in developed markets, uh, you know, and and um, and commodity markets doing what they're doing obviously could be some challenges for broader uh, emerging markets. Japan has been, you know, kind of the one economy for developed markets that hasn't really seen the type of you know more sticky inflationary pressures that other developed markets have, and I think that's raised a lot of questions around Japan um, in the sense of will they eventually see it, and is just there longer lags to that economy? You know, I think that's really uncertain. You know, nevertheless, um, you know, I think this environment does raise the risk, uh, you know, that they actually can generate some inflationary pressures like the rest of, of, of DM, in which case, uh, you know, you would have to see that policy adjustment coming out of the Bank of Japan. So I think still a lot of uncertainty around that economy as well. Tiffany, thank you. Dan, turning to you to walk through some of the investment implications. Sure. So to start, given significant global economic uncertainty, geopolitical risks, um, we think it makes sense to be you know, more liquid and, and, and more defensive. Uh, with that said, we are seeing some uh, interesting opportunities. Within the emerging market um, area um, of the opportunity set, more cautious on China, more cautious about Chinese credit. Uh, China doesn't have the same type of inflationary pressures, so yields in their bond markets um, look um, less interesting uh, to us. Uh, but other areas of the emerging market opportunity set for some of the higher risk strategies do look interesting. Uh, central banks across the emerging market world have been more aggressive than developed market central banks. You're seeing some turning of, of inflation uh, at a more aggressive um, pace. Brazil, as an example, uh, where central banks have been very, very active um, early on. Then when it comes to the U.S. dollar, um, almost universal acknowledgement uh, within the firm that the dollar um, looks quite expensive from a longer term valuation perspective but also a hesitancy to be too aggressive in reflecting a negative dollar view at this point in time. Uh, There's tremendous absolute relative momentum to the US economy. You have a central bank uh, now that um, is tightening very, very aggressively and a lot of other uncertainty that could lead to a flight to quality dynamic that um, supports the US dollar. So existing firm wide positioning is a slight tilt to uh, non-dollar currencies, but sized at a very, very small level relative to the amount of risk we could take uh, in theory, given that we expect there to be better uh, overall entry points. Uh, So there are going to be some targeted opportunities in terms of some of the higher quality local interest rate markets. There'll likely be some opportunities in some of the higher quality credits as well as a source of diversification versus more traditional credit um, in the US and in Europe. (laughs) 